السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله Assalamu alaikum. I am Dr. Bilal Phillips and I would like to share some words of advice to our newly reborn Muslims, especially the youth amongst you. My advice I will give you in basically six main points. The first point has to do with the challenges that you're going to face. Once you've chosen Islam deliberately, you were Muslim before, you're almost like a new Muslim. You can say, though technically speaking before you were reborn into Islam, you were called a Muslim by name, but in, in the fact of the matter, you're really not a Muslim, you know, in terms of your actual consciousness and your practice. So, having chosen Islam deliberately, making that choice, you've come in and you want to practice, you will find challenges. Because at the time when you first join Islam, when you first become a Muslim, again, or reborn, when you're first reborn in Islam, the satanic forces will be very strong in trying to divert you because you are at your weakest. On one hand, you are strong because you've made that decision, but in terms of the foundation that you have because it's weak, then it is easy to get confused for things to become unclear um, and for you to have doubts, all of these factors, the satanic forces will play with and use to try to divert you, get you to think you made the wrong decision, you're not really ready for this. All kinds of thoughts will come to your mind. So know that this is natural, you know, and it is from Allah. Allah is permitting it to happen for you to strengthen yourself, to become more certain about your foundation. So where you have doubts, then you should seek guidance from those around you who have knowledge, who are practicing Islam more firmly, etc. Get their help. Don't be shy. Don't be ashamed for any doubts you may have, get them cleared. Because once you clear them, then in fact, you become stronger. But a basic principle that you should keep in mind as a general concept, as a Muslim, is that you should always be thankful to Allah. Whatever circumstance you find yourself in, you know that Allah wants the best for you. Even though it might seem like a bad, painful, hurtful, harmful circumstance, know that Allah has only permitted it because there is something good in it for you. So it's for you to find the good. You always, rather than looking at the negative, which is most obvious, clear to you, and you can complain about it, which will only weaken you, will not make you any stronger. Instead, try to find the good that is in it, the benefit that you can take from it. Try to have that as a general outlook on life. That there is good 
in virtually everything that happens around you. It may not be what you want, what you desire, what you wish, but know that, as Allah said, Asa an takrahu shay'an wa huwa khairun lakum. Perhaps you will like something, or you might dislike something, and it's actually good for you. Or you might like something, and it's actually bad for you. And the law knows, and you really don't know. You are only estimating, guessing, thinking. But Allah knows. So, the first point is that don't be surprised if you find yourself with challenges. Whether it's challenges from your family, your friends, your school, whatever. There will be challenges. And know that the challenges ultimately, every one of them that you pass, you become a better person. You become a stronger Muslim. Your Iman has been strengthened and increased. The second point to keep in mind is that you have to move in a step-by-step -step fashion. You don't try to change everything all at once. Because when you try to do everything, everything that is required of Islam or recommended in Islam together, it may become too great a burden for you to keep up with. And then you end up dropping everything. So better for you to do the basic things which are obligatory. Establish those and then you build gradually with them. So the step-by-step -step approach is the best approach for building, having clear building blocks which would, having clear building blocks which you can build on top of. You'll have a solid foundation. That's, that's the idea of the step-by-step -step approach is that you build for yourself a solid foundation. Rather than trying to do everything at once and then your foundation is weak, so your whole structure crumbles. This is a common mistake that people who newly come into Islam or who are reborn with a lot of enthusiasm, they try to do too much. So take it easy. I'm not saying take it easy, meaning you don't do what is obligatory. Now, what is obligatory, you're going to try to do. But do it uh, in a step-by-step -step approach. And you also have to remember that those around you who haven't made the decision that you have to accept Islam completely and try to practice it don't expect that they're going to change overnight you didn't change overnight it took you some time to get to that point so there were steps that you had to go through before you could actually arrive at that point so you also have to give them time to change and as a newly reborn person you might feel, because of your enthusiasm, that you want everybody around you to make the same change you made. And you forget that it took you time. You want them to change right now, today. You've explained to them, you can't understand why they can't accept it right now. But that's not how most people learn. It's a gradual process. So you have to be patient, wait with them, Help them. Yes, it's your duty to give them da'wah. Personally, when I accepted Islam, I gave da'wah to my parents for 21 years before they accepted Islam. 21 years. Maybe you're not even 21. But no, we don't. As long as people will listen, you keep on giving the da'wah. Because in the end, our responsibility is to convey the message, not necessarily to convert people. Because that's left with Allah and what their own intentions are. If Prophet Muhammad couldn't 
convert his own uncle, Abu Talib, who was one of the closest people to him. In the dunya, among the closest people to him was Abu Talib. Yet, he couldn't convert him to Islam. So if Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu had difficulty, then who are we to think that simply because we have accepted Islam, we have explained Islam, everybody should now accept it. So we have to be patient and take things step by step. The third point that I think we should be conscious of is the issue of friends. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu had said, choose your friends well because you will be raised on the day of judgment with your friends. So if you have friends who are from your per previous period, who are still doing the things you were doing, you stop them, they're still doing them. For you to hang around with them, they will only weaken you. You didn't want to die in their state. So, if you end up raised with them, it means you died in their state. That's what the Prophet ﷺ is saying. Choose your friends well, because you will be like your friends. This is the pressure, what they call peer pressure. Pressure of friends. Those around you, surround you. They want you to be like them. They feel more comfortable if you're just like them. If you're not like them, then they feel uncomfortable. And they will put pressure on you until you can be like them. And if you stay around with them all the time, you hang out with them all the time, you're with them all the time, eventually, whatever decisions you've made, you'll start to go back on them, gradually, till you end up just like they are, again. That is the normal process. So you have to choose your friends well. You may have to change your friends altogether. Because those that you were with were so far gone that you trying to talk to them has no impact on them or apparently has no impact. People like that you have to get away from. Not to say you cut your ties altogether. You can still go back and see them from time to time. But don't spend all your time around them. You need to choose people who will remind you of Allah. Remind you of good things. Amal Saleh. Righteous deeds. These are the people who you need to be around. They will help you to be stronger. To be more firm in your deen. The fourth point to keep in mind is that Iman increases and it decreases. It's not a matter, your faith, it's not a matter of you made a choice so you now will be at that level of faith from the time you actually made the choice. You will remain at that level. No. It's natural for us to sometimes be stronger in our faith and weaker at other times. The companions of the Prophet ﷺ, the Sahaba, they complained to the Prophet ﷺ of this. They said, you know, O Messenger of Allah, when we are with you, our Iman is so high, our faith is so high. But when we go back to our family, our children and so and so, we find our faith going down. You know, are we hypocrites? Is this a sign of hypocrisy? The Prophet ﷺ said no. You know, your life, that's how life will be. Sometimes you'll be up, sometimes you'll be down. It's, it's all a part of life. So don't worry about the fact that your faith may not be high, at a high all the time, or that it's constantly increasing, apparently increasing to you. No. Know that faith goes through cycles. And what you need to do is, of course, because you want it to, the cycle to be moving upwards. You know, as it's, you go through the cycle, each time you're getting higher and higher. Not one where you're going spiraling downwards. Of course, you don't want that. So, you should be aware of this natural process of increase and decrease under normal circumstances. Now, the fifth point 
related to this is what causes Iman to increase and decrease? The answer is very simple. It's not a complicated, you know, philosophical concept. No, very simple. It's simply that Iman increases with good deeds and decreases with bad deeds. So if you want Iman to grow, if you want your faith to be on the increase in general, then you have to increase your good deeds and reduce or decrease your bad deeds. It's very simple. Not very complicated at all. So what you try to do is try to do as many good deeds as you can. If you find yourself going down, know that it's because you're not doing sufficient good deeds on one hand and you're also doing too many bad deeds on the other hand. So you want to try to decrease your bad deeds and increase your good deeds and the end result is your faith will be on the increase in general. So this is a general principle to keep in mind. Whenever you feel yourself going down, then look around for some good deeds to do. And you will always be able to find them. There will always be many good deeds around you that you can possibly do. When you do them, it will start to increase your faith again. And all the time when we look around, there are bad deeds that we're doing. Maybe very small, minor, whatever, but they're all around us. And we're all committing them. As the Prophet ﷺ has said, all of the descendants of Adam constantly make errors. So we've got errors going on all around us. But the best of those who make errors constantly are those who repent constantly. So on one hand, you try to decrease your bad deeds. When you do them, make sure that you repent. You seek Allah's forgiveness to remove the sin of your evil deed from yourself. Now, the last point I would like to mention for you is that you need to study Islam formally. It's not enough to think that, okay, I will go to this lecture here, this mosque, or in that center, or in that institute. I'll go on YouTube, I'll Facebook. You know, you pick up things from here, there, and everywhere. It's not to say you won't learn anything and won't be beneficial, of course. You will learn and it will be beneficial. But when you study in a haphazard way, in an unstructured way, you, it takes a long time for you to learn. And even when you learn, you can't pass it on to others. You may know for yourself, but if we ask you to teach, can you teach this class on Tawheed and Aqidah about Allah? Uh, you say, no, 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 sorry, you know, I, I don't have that. But you've been attending and reading and watching and all these years. Like one brother pointed out to me, he said, you know, when I joined your university, my university, Islamic Online University, in one semester, I learned more than I learned in the previous five years of my Islam. Five, previous five years of my Islam, taking information from here, there, YouTube, on the phone, Skype, you know, all the different channels, I was getting information. What I learned in one semester was more than I learned in five years previous. I'm not saying that's the same for everybody, but it's just giving us an idea that when you study in a structured learning environment, you're going to, you're building your knowledge again step by step, building solid building blocks. And if we ask you at any point, can you teach this? you'll say, yeah, I can teach it. You'll be able to teach it because you have learned it in a structured way. So structured learning of knowledge is superior to unstructured, uh, haphazard, whenever it's convenient type of learning. So in summary, I advise you in this regard that you must Seek the knowledge. Because if you are to grow Islamically, to know what's right and wrong, reduce the wrong, increase the good, the right, then you must have more and more knowledge of Islam. 
Your knowledge should always be growing till the time you are put in the grave. There is no time you can say, I know everything. I know everything I need to know. No. You, there's always more that you can learn and you can improve. So, always be seeking knowledge. And then you have a duty to share that knowledge. When Allah blesses you with knowledge, then He puts on you the obligation of sharing that knowledge with others. That's why the Prophet ﷺ had said, خَيْرُكُمْ مَنْ تَعَلَّمَ الْقُرْآنَ وَعَلَّمَ The best of you are those who learn the Qur'an and teach it to others. That's what makes them the best. Because they're teaching it to others. And if they didn't learn the Qur'an in a structured fashion, then they wouldn't be able to teach it to others. So, remember the challenges, we're all going to face them. You can't escape them. Secondly, you need to build your Islam step by step. Your da'wah, be patient. Thirdly, you may have to change your friends. Make sure you have good friends around you who are going to help you to improve. Fourthly, know that your faith will be up sometimes and down sometimes. Fifthly, know that it will go up with good deeds and go down with bad deeds. And then sixthly, you must study Islam and do so in a structured program in order to maximize the benefit from the knowledge you're seeking. So I hope these points are clear and they represent a path for you to follow. This is like a manhaj or a system of study or systematic way to approach your Islam in order for you to become a stronger Muslim as time passes. I hope that it has been beneficial and I ask Allah to guide you all, keep you firmly on the path and for you to share what you have with others. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.